out again. There we go. Sorry. Okay, I got to put this in my holder. Those of you who are just... It is so hard to adjust the... Um, the focus here when it's alive. It just seems overreactive sometimes. Okay. All right. Some of you are just uh, going to be coming on here really soon. And I got in here a couple minutes, a minute early. So I see we've got one on here joining the live chat. Hi. I'm going to chop some papers here while I'm waiting for people to come on and join us. And we're gonna be working on these CD sleeves. And they look like this. I got them on Amazon. Hi, hi, Nora. And so I'm using the, a six inch paper pad and some of the others from the collection. Hi, Michelle. And this is the Home Again by Echo Park. It was one of the Club EP kits um, that I got this year. So I have some items that are six inch and I have some of the 12 inches. Hi, Kathy. Hi, everyone. So I do have a an iPad off to the side, off screen, so I can look up there and hopefully uh, see some comments, but also I'll be crafting, so I know it will be a little difficult. And the, the glare won't be an issue because I will be moving this off Hi, Tina. You made it. <laughs> I decided to do one early in the morning for me so that I can get some more of the internationals. What I'm going to be doing is working with these CD sleeves. Um, I got these on Amazon, um, and you could probably even make your own. But you can see I've decorated this. I punched holes, and I'm going to make it into a journal. Hi, MB Hughes. So um, those of you who are going to be coming in late, you can always watch the replay to get the beginning of this. Um, I, don't, I, I will get right into it really soon. Hi, Julie. So these are the CD sleeves that I got from Amazon. They are really cool. And uh, hi, ca Canadian girl, hi. I wanna show you on these CD sleeves that I actually, on some of them, I cut this little tab off and then put them through my tab punch board from We Are Memory Keepers, and look at that. So they actually fit perfectly behind one of these. See, look. So you could have this, and then you could have these tabbed ones. These are really fun. I plan on using just these, um, and I have put regular eyelets in here. Hi, Melissa. And I have one of the wide eyelets. These wide eyelets are in my shop. Aren't they pretty? Oh, you know what? I realize this one's a shiny and this one's matte. I, I mixed them up. Oh, well, it's still pretty cool. So I think this is cool. I will show you how to use the tab punch board if you want to do this as well. But I think that is going to add. I just discovered that last night. It's going to add a whole other dimension to this album. Okay. Yes. Glad to have you all here. Again, if you're coming in late, these are what the CD sleeves look like. I got mine on Amazon. They are thick cardstock, but they're not real, they're not bad. Now I use a two-hole punch for mine um, to punch the two holes in here. But um, you can just measure out where you want those. And what happened to my two-hole punch? I had everything sitting on my desk and I can't. Oh, here it is one of these and i know that when i have gone to thrift stores every time i look in the office supply area they have one of these at least sometimes they have a whole bin of them because people get rid of them i think they're handy um, set it to five inches it's really close to five inches anyway and um, i think they're really handy but if you don't have it you can just measure out and make yourself a template of where to, where to punch your holes in the end just remember not to put any decorations right across this band here until you get i mean put your paper on but don't put any embellishments or words along this strip right here until you get it all decorated i would decorate all of them and then punch your holes or excuse me i would put the papers on then punch your holes then you know where you can put this kind of decoration so this is the back on this one i had a little two little strips that were not wide enough to cover this so i just added them on in the end to get them all uh, to fill up my space here. So the dimensions for this front, 
well, let's do this. This back square is four and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. This one's a little shorter because you've got room for this opening. So it's still four and three quarter inches by four and a half inches, and that's that. So I've cut a couple of these out. I will show you on this light one right here. And I, I don't have to round the corners because everything is square. Um, what I'm going to do though, is I want to get this notch in here. So I'm going to put this in here. And Julie, who's with us today, demonstrated this really well on her channel recently. I'm gonna take this paper and I'm gonna shove it all in all the way. So it's level with this, the edge here and here, but all the way down. Okay. And I'm going to trace right there. And I'm going to shove it all the way up against that edge and trace here. And cut that out. Let's see if I got that right. Sometimes it takes a little practice. I'm not too worried about my pencil marks because I'm going to use Distress Ink anyway. Um, since these are kind of they're craft colored CD sleeves. They're kind of vintagey looking anyway. Perfect, except I got pencil marks there. So I'm just using black soot distress. You don't have to use distress at all. But I just think it helps it actually to pop a little bit off that paper. Okay, now doing so much of this, um, I'm going to. Um, use a tape runner because it'll be a lot faster than just using liquid glue. But I did use only liquid glue when I did my first one. And that is how easy it is to get that to where you have that little border showing clear through. You can see that right there, how well it left the little border there so the craft paper shows through. Isn't that cool? So let's do the back here. And again, this is four and three quarters by four and three quarters. I have some cut out. This would be, I don't know that distressing this was really going to be a whole lot of help since it's so black already. The domed blending tool, you know what? Thank you for the reminder. I bought them and I haven't gotten it out yet. Here's it. Here it is right here. Thank you for that reminder. Yay. Okay, we are going to use this now. But it, it's better for when you're doing the kind of, um, where you're doing this, where your paper's down and you're coming in and, and doing it this way. It does, you know, it's not as helpful for this, but I still want to play with it. And we'll, we'll play around with it and see what we think. So now that I have this, I think I will go ahead and get the holes punched so that I will know where I'm going. This is not perfectly five inches, so I am sliding it in just a pinch. But anyway, now I know um, now I know where my holes are, so I won't decorate past that. Let's see if I can trim this down here and use this somewhat. I know it's kind of big. Okay, see how that just gets lost on there? That's why I like to... That's why I like to do this and distress it just a little bit. And while I'm at it, I'm distressing my fingers. Hi. Okay, this helps it to pop and where you can actually see it there. I could use foam tape to help it to really come up, but I'm a little hesitant until I know. I don't know which one is going to be my cover. And if it was my cover, I would add more dimension. But, you know, it's going to be a chunky album. Let's make it a chunky album. I'm just gonna go and do it. So. Da -da. Gotta get scissors here. I like using foam tape as a fo post to just foam squares because I just feel like I can control the amount better. And it seems to be um, a little more um, cost effective. Okay, so let's put that right there. Now I have, um, I have a little bin and when I have ephemera pieces, I throw the ephemera pieces in there and any little tiny strips that I have left over 
from all my little tiny cuts. And so that's how these are really helpful there. That is going to add a little bit of dimension, I think, for me. And I do have my Barely Art glue. Someone gave me this idea. The pin is so long for this one. And just to put a magnet on the outside of my jar there, it's working great. Forget who gave me that idea. It was one of the viewers. Loving the Barely Art glue, and I really have been using it. Okay, let's just get that little extra color in there. Okay, now for this strip right there, it's still four and three quarters tall, but it is five eighths inch wide. Let me see if I have anything. That's just, just long enough. Let me see if I can get a five eighths inch strip going here. Three quarter, that's an inch. Let's see if that worked. It's kind of hard to do on these little these little trimmers. Now you notice though that these uh, these two corners here are rounded, so I am going to round the corners on this. A little hard because when you have a really thin strip of paper, it's hard to get it lined up in a corner rounder. Perfect. And we need that distress ink. Hope everyone is staying well. We have been well in our family. We took all the precautions that we needed. There we go. Now you'll notice in this one I have some lining on the inside here. And what do I do with this? We cut this off of this piece of paper. You could actually flip it over and just glue it right in there. And that's all you need to do. See how that just fits in there perfectly? I actually, on the first one, I actually just glued an entire strip, but then I realized that I'm wasting this paper here. So there, but it does make it a little harder to find when you are trying to um, put a piece of paper in here. So you could put photos in here. You know, these pockets could be for photos. And here's the difference here. I, I glued an entire strip in here, whereas this one is just that little piece. See the difference? Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you guys. Okay, so that's the first two. I will, I, I don't have to put eyelets in all these. I do, I put these in as an experiment. I will put eyelets in the front and probably the back covers. Um, but I want to get on and show, oh, yeah, I did. Oh, you know, we missed something. Oop, this one right here. Okay, so let's put strips on that one. There's this color. I don't know if I have, let's see what I have. <clears throat> Every strip I find is all this, so it's like, okay. <laughs> I have a ton of those strips. <laughs> Everything seems to, I'm just gonna go for it because it's. it seems to be the color of the day here. Okay, that, that give us a little, I started to say a little shine, but this is not shine, is it? So what countries do we have represented here today? I know Tina is international. Here we go. Now, you could also actually put a, um, embellishments on the back. Tennessee. Um, and then... Or you could just leave it like this and use it as a photo mount. So, or quote, Ohio. Okay, so let's get on. I want to show you how to make the tabs that I did on the tab punch board here. UK, hi, and East Tennessee to be exact. Okay, I have the tab punch board. And the first thing I need to do is take three of these and cut off this little bit right there. Yeah, they would help to keep the pocket together. 
South Africa, hi. So when I put this in there, all I have to do is put my fingers here and here and push this up against my finger and cut. Otherwise I'm trying to line, trying to line it up perfectly, whereas I just put my fingers there. Now I have this, so I want to do three of those. And another one, Oklahoma, hi. And there, so now I've got three of those. Remember I said this is just shy of five inches wide. So what I want to do is put this on, I'm gonna do a medium punch. The first one I need to do is gonna be on the end here, oops. It's gonna be right here. And flip it over, line that up with medium. Okay, I'm gonna do the others and then I'll trim. So that's on the right. Now I'm gonna do one on the left. Oops. And medium. Okay, we've got a left. Now we need a center. So I'm going to put this on five medium, but because I said this is just a, a hair narrower than a five, I'm sliding it over a little closer to the small. And now I'll line this up to medium. Now I need to trim all my little phalanges off here. And then we can use this and we'll decorate these and put these in there. Oops. There's one. I'm not getting lined up today here. And this one. There we go. Okay, so we've got a mess. <laughs> Okay, we have the left tab, the middle tab, and the right tab. Perfect. I, this is one of my favorite punch boards, this is the tab punch board. If you don't have it, I just really think that's one of the best. And I like the mini envelope board. Okay, so let's get these covered, and we will put them in the album as well. Okay, so again, uh, I like six-inch paper pads, but just to save time, I had already cut some of these down. This is pretty cool, actually, too. I think that could be really colorful. I like it all. Isn't it difficult? This would be a good project for your single-sided papers because you wouldn't, for once, you wouldn't have to worry about um, which side you're using of this pocket and all the way down. And I'm, then I'm looking for my pencil. I'm going to mark the top edge. And I'm going to slide it up in my pocket all the way and I'm going to mark the bottom edge. You could develop a uh, a file, a cut file for these. That would be handy. If you have a Cricut or a Cameo Brother Scan and Cut. Okay, perfect. The new button press, I think it's going to be, a, I think the button press is going to be a hot, hot item. Um, assuming there's no design flaws with it. We Are Memory Keepers is great and they either knock it out of the park or they have a huge design flaw in their product. It's like there's no middle of the ground, middle of the road. Okay, so I'm actually not using the white side I'm using, although I think it'd be cool. And I did see the button press at, at Creativation, was impressed with it. And I already have two button making machines, but I still want to get that to try it out. And I'm just thinking um, that it would be, for those of you who are just getting started, let's see, uh, four and three quarters. I think it just needs to trim. Who are just getting started in button making and you wouldn't have to then go and uh, buy all these different machines you get one machine and the one machine with the uh, 
with all the pieces, you know, it's, it's really affordable. I'm using the whole strip this time. And I'm using liquid glue instead of tape runner because it is really hard to get a tape runner on the back of there and insert it. I could have pulled that out just a little bit. Let's see, I have a little wiggle room here. I like it showing a little bit off the top, out of the pocket right here and here. I think it looks better. Okay. And code. this is the one with the tab. Now I'm thinking, 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 thinking. You could put, obviously you could stamp something on there, but I want to measure this just to test something out. Hi, Michelle. Okay, one, let's say one and a half by three quarters. Let's test a, a sample piece here. One and a half by three quarters. One and a half. Okay, I want to see how well this would work to put this little tab thing there. I'm not sure how well it'd be easy. I, I lost my mini corner rounder and I need to find it, the one that's in my shop. It'd be great for something like this. Okay, I want to see. Yeah, that works just fine. So obviously I could still put words on this. I could write on the tab. Hmm. Let's see which side I wanted up. Okay. These are these are um you asked about these. I got them from Amazon. When I am done with the recording, I will go uh immediately and put links underneath this video. At least I hope immediately. I do have to end exactly at an hour because I have to I have an appointment. I have to take my daughter to, to work. Okay, and we need one for the back. And again, these are four and three quarters squared. I think I will use one of these. Um, I like this. I love all these patterns. It's hard to pick just one. I don't think I'm going to put anything on the back of that tab. Oops. I saw someone said something, and as soon as you're done talking, um, it disappears off my screen until the next person says something. So now you see how this one fits completely behind that. It's really cool. I like it. Alrighty, but I need to punch holes and so I know where my holes are going to be. And then I will see what I need to put on here for embellishments. I do have some of these. The magical thing about home is that it feels good to leave and even better to come back. Thank you so much. Um, alrighty. And then there's this one that says, bless this mess. This is all about home. I've already made a couple projects out of this paper pack. There we go, let's do that. Okay, how about, I was thinking about um, popping this up, but I don't think I will. We gotta make this fairly simple so that we can keep moving on. Another thing I thought about is using washi tape on the tabs here instead of having to cut something out. And I do love how this is so um, simple here, but on the other hand, I like, I want to add something for color here. I like this one right here. It's just one of the, it was a cut apart in the, or a um, ephemera piece. Nope, I need to slide it over. This is why I wanted my holes there, so I know where to place things. So that's the left tab. Now I need that middle tab card right here. I have this one pre-cut, but not, no notches cut. I could have pre-cut the notches, then you wouldn't have to watch me do this all the time. <laughs> so what have you guys been making? Have you been crafting more or less during the pandemic? 
because it seems like with a lot of people um, having to home educate their children and it just seems like there's been a lot of or a decrease in video watch times and craft time for some people. You know what? I could use these for those tabs. I will do that. And again, I've got those pencil marks, but I don't have to remove them because I'm going to do this anyway. Shh, no one will know but us that I've got pencil marks hidden underneath there. And I am happy to report that in our state of Colorado, we are cases, even though we have opened up the state uh, for quite a bit of activity and businesses, that our cases continue to decline. Should be sewing more. <laughs> our cases continue to decline and our death rate is really going down. I didn't center that one well at all. Okay, and now I need that, and I want to see. Yeah, it'll fit. So I said one and three quarters by something. Ah, uh, what did I say? It was... I think it was a half. Yeah, that's actually perfect. But it's stuck in there. Okay. I think it was one and three quarters, one and a half. Yeah, I gotta get the ruler out again. Hi from Australia. Hi, Vicki. Uh, where'd it go? Okay, let's measure that again. And I'm going to forget again. It's, it is one and a half by three quarters. There we go. Let's see if I can find one and a half half in here. Now yeah, that'd be good enough. <laughs> okay, and just round those little corners off there. And it doesn't matter, I could put that way. I think I'll use this one. So those of you just popping in, we are using these CD sleeves that I got on Amazon. Um, these ones, I cut this little notch off here and I use the tab punch board to create tabs. But I'm seeing what I'm missing here is a strip for the lining in there, a lining strip. I don't know what you call it, a pocket liner. I need something to go in there. I don't want to use that same green strip that I've been using everywhere. So let's look in here. This is my six inch pad. I have several sheets left over. I tend to use a lot of the dark ones on the inside because they're just so pretty. I know. I'm gonna use this even with that hole. It's not gonna cause me a problem really. Four and three quarters. Um, there we go. It'll be on the far down on the inside. Okay. Now my husband has to work from home. So as soon as I'm done with this, I have to turn the air conditioner back on. If I leave it on while I'm filming, the, the noise of it is too um, oppressive. Okay. Now, and I need to do one on the back. Let's see. I had pre-cut some, but I already used those up. So let's do this one. Four and three quarters. Good morning. Hi. Uh, let's see. The backs are four and three quarters square. Ooh, and now I have some nice strips here. And tape runner. All right, and punch that hole so we can see where we are. Uh, 
And now we have, let's assume this is going to be the cover. Maybe not, but we've got the, I think this one would be the cover. And then we've got the left tab. Okay, hi. So we're making this journal out of these CD sleeves from, I got them on Amazon. So you can see I'm just putting the papers on the fronts and the backs, although the backs I'm leaving fairly plain. And then for the center, the insides, I'm cutting this tab off and I'm using a tab punch board to make these tabs to go on the inside. And I've got one more to do now. And that's this one right here. I, I would like to see these in white. So if you've seen these in white, I mean, I know there are white CD sleeves, but I meant with the um, that we could decorate. I haven't been keeping my glue covered, so it's starting to get a little thick. I may have to clean my tip out. I don't want to break this. Don't ever force that pin through. Um, usually I'm covering it every time that I am using it. So anyway, um, it would be nice to find some soft. I'd see hard white ones like for mailing CDs and that's entirely different. Okay, so I have another one of these pre-cut. This is a big version of this one here. I don't have any of these yet, so I'll use this one, but I, I can't see the pencil marks, so I'm going to turn it over and draw my pencil marks this way. And those of you just coming in, this is four and three quarters by four and a half. I'm putting this in, lining it up to the bottom and against the edge of the pocket marking the top edge then I'm sliding it up in the up against the top edge and marking the bottom oops and that way I can cut out a little notch here I'm using the black soot distress ink on all these and the papers are called home again by Cartabella I believe okay Perfect. I normally use a lot more liquid glue than I'm using right now, but this is faster for video. Oops. Okay, now because I use a dark one there, I want to use something light on the inside. I'll use this one. Must use the liquid. Can we use it? Yeah, I let it dry out. Yeah, I did. Okay, I have to go back to, whoops. That's the art glitter glue. Because my, I let my other one dry out in the tip. And now we need a tab for this one. What else do we have here in our scrappies? This is really cute. I need to cut up a really good one just for a tab though. Okay. Let's do that. See, I already forgot. Folks, what did I say? One and a half by three quarters, I think. Looks good. Perfect. <laughs> I need to turn my notifications off. I've got notifications showing up on my screen. Okay. Did we get that? We need to do the back. And actually, do I have enough? I don't think I cut too much off. So let's see if I have four and three quarters left. I should. Oops, you know what's going to happen. I've got that little notch there. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, so I have this. You see, I want to use it, but it's got that notch. So I'm just going to have to cover it up, right? I'll just put a strip. 
across there and that will work. Okay. I'll put that at the top. Now I need a really narrow strip or something like this. There's no place like home. Let's see if there's anything else. I think I'll do that one, but it needs, again, just a little. Sometimes I only do distressing on the bottom because it makes it look like a shade and a shadow under it. But I think this one needs the whole thing to be distressed. And I'm going to line that perfectly up at the top. Normally I would pull it down, but because I have that little notch thing there, Oops, you know what? I better do these holes. I didn't think about that. I almost messed up because I don't want to punch holes. I could. I don't think the hole would interfere here. It's going to be somewhat over it, so I'm just going to center it and repunch it. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, there, because I don't think it really interfered. It didn't, it didn't cut over my letters or anything. Okay, now let's look at this. We have, I think I wanted to, here's the three, oops, the other thing. There we go. There's the three tabs. Aren't those cute? And then this would be in the front. That would be in the back. And now we could do anything we want. We could just add a page to it or more pockets. You could make this as thick as you want. My rings are pretty big. So I have room to really expand. And then again, you could put photos inside and a photo on the back of each one of these. So that's quite a bit of room. And this one doesn't have anything on the front or now it is this one. So let's see what we can do with that. Love builds a happy home. It's cute, but it's really wide for what I'm doing. Um, so I would have to cut it down. There's gather together, which would really show up well on this one. The white would show up better on this one. Oops, uh, I think I want to use this and that on this. Okay. Like right there somehow. Thank you. Oh, I love the black and white stripe. Ooh, cute. But I'm also thinking I've got these enamel dots. I kind of like them. Now this, those of you who see me use this, this is actually like a frosting spreader. And I asked my husband, it was too long. I asked my husband to cut it down. He did. And then he beveled it so that um, it's more sharp to go under. I'm trying to think. But I can pick up a sticker like halfway and just plop it down in place like that. Plop. Very cute. Okay. Let's see if I need that somewhere. Okay, and the this one here. Have it gathered together, but we need something else. This would totally get lost because it's so dark. But here's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know if this will show up, but I'm going to try. I have some stamps here. And I want to see um, if I stamp them, would they really show up well on this pattern? I don't have to use it on pattern paper, but I just want to try it. This is a stamp I've had forever. Uh, not so much. It does show up, but 
and it's uh, take time to enjoy life's simple joys. It was an old dots stamp or a close to my heart. It does show up. I mean, I just, it's not as great as it could be. There we go. But it gives me something else to put down here. And I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm thinking about something light. <laughs> this is kind of obsessive about saving little pieces. Look at that. <laughs> Maybe that fits. It fits. It's the exact size. Don't you just love it? Put, putting foam behind? Yeah, d foam definitely helps things, things to pop. So I like to get, uh, change the color, like not put black on black. Um, I like to distress the edges and also foam would help that pop as well. And I'm going to glue this on here. Okay, if I can grab it, I can't even grab it. Almost the exact size, but that's really cute. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one down and then pop this one up. Okay, and the foam tape, which I just had. Yeah, well, I've got more here. There it is. <sighs> Knew that would show up. Okay. Does that say, I've got a message I need it there. Indiana? <laughs> Great. Whoops. There we go. Take time to enjoy life's simple joys. I'm still thinking, though, I would like something. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We've got these, which are little skinny strips, and we've got this, but I tore that up, so that's not going to work. I, I carry your heart with me, but this is, I. if I trimmed it to fit this, I would lose one of the words, and I don't want to do that. So I'm thinking just a tiny, tiny little strip here. It seems like it needs a little help. Like this. Well, it's not really showing up that much though. It looks like part of the pattern, so I'm not impressed. That's what I'll do. Since I cut it, I might as well use it. And I don't bother putting Distress Ink on the black paper because it's not going to show up. Okay. And my scissors kind of match the project here. Okay, so again, I'm not really decorating the backs. Um, the back cover, though, might, you know, use an embellishment here and there. We've got a little less than 15 minutes, so I'll have to start wrapping this up. But again, you can add as many pages as you want to this. And now that I know that I want this to be my cover, I am going to add eyelets to the front. And I'm going to use the wide ones. I just, I'm, I've been, I'm in love with them. Let's see if I want the black or the gray. I think I like the, oh, there's also a dark gray here. So these wide eyelets are in my shop. Let's see. I really think I like the, um, how dramatic 
these are the black ones. I like the wide. So uh, this is set to a, come on, A1. There, aren't those cool? I just think those are so, I love how chunky they are. And the back one already has eyelets in it that I'm thinking as well that I could do more to embellish this. Now that I know this is the front, I can go ahead and add more dimension if I want. Uh, use some of this. I'm gonna add that dark blue, a lighter blue. I am a big fan of enamel dots. Oops, well, that one kind of didn't make it. There, cute, right there. The other thing we can do is do something across here with the dots or That's very cute. Uh, if you have sometimes a really narrow sentiment that you could put like right here, and I know I did have the stamps. I bought the stamps extra for the collection, or no, it came with the stamps. I just wanna see if there's anything. It says, Our Happy Place. Let's do that, we could do that. I have scraps of cardstock that are stone colored this color here that really matches this paper well and I haven't used any of their stamps yet for this set so this will be a good good use of them I'm off camera right now I know I'm just putting my I'm just putting my stamp on the block I am using Simon Says Stamps Intense Black Premium Die Pad. I have used Distress Ink in the past. Uh, I knew I was going to get that crooked. I don't want to stick my head over the camera. There, I had to do it off camera. <laughs> anyway, um, I have used Distress Ink to stamp my images before my if you want it more faded and not quite so dark. Well, I have an idea. I'm going to leave a little extra room at the end here. And I need this. There's that. Come on, get out of there. And I know I didn't cut that perfectly straight. There. Let's give this a little extra. Oh, I really got crazy with it. I think when it comes to just using what I'm doing, holding in your hand and distressing it, the flat edge sponge daubers work better. This is better for the times when you're trying to put it down on your paper and distress it this way, which is beautiful. It's just that it takes a little extra time from what I'm doing right now. Okay, on camera. So this I wanna put right there. And then what I was thinking, well, it's pretty centered. What I was thinking was putting a couple enamel dots on either end here, kind of like they're brads holding it in place. Okay. I like these dark blue ones here. Come on. Like that. Oh, that is really cute. I like that look. So all we have to do now, it's going to be a little floppy because I was looking, for, I had a whole box of uh, the book rings, but 
in cleaning my craft area, I have misplaced them. So I'm using these really large ones, which is kind of an overkill. But again, if you want to put extra uh, papers in here or extra envelopes or sleeves, then you would use the big rings. So give me a chance. As soon as we uh, get off this live, I'll put a couple links down below. And one of those will be my affiliate link to these on Amazon. And it comes in a pretty big pack. Um, but if you're making albums with them, here's how many there were. And if you're making albums with them, that's a good deal because you'll need that many of them. Um, but if you don't want that many, you can split it with a friend. And there we have it. So we've got this one, Home Sweet Home. You could put photos inside. You could put letters inside. You could put uh, memorabilia inside. You could put a photo here. I really like that one, actually. Again, perfect project to use for your single-sided papers as well, because then you don't have to fret about um, which side to, to use. I love it. So thank you, everyone. Any questions on this? I know I didn't get to always look down at what you were uh, sharing. Uh, you can leave your questions now, and I'm just going to look at this back and see if I want anything on the back here. Maybe that would work. Um, I want to trim this up while we're finishing our chat. Okay. And, oops. Okay, let's use the... Oh, that's great. I really do like this. And it makes a nice, even distress. Perfect. And there we go. Just for the back, something instead of a plain old back. There we go. And we will wrap it up and I will get those links put down below. Thank you for coming and participating in um, following through on this live video. Does this work out better for you? I like, I wanted to vary up the time. So I'm not always doing it in an evening and losing my international viewers. So I thought that would be, thought that would be helpful. And um, yeah, it's great to not always meet at exactly the same time every month. Thank you everyone for watching. And I hope that was uh, something that inspired you to start practicing this on your own. And now we got to turn this off.